Hey guys, it's Dr. Hayes, and I am making this screencast here for you so you can see what uh, how your paper should be set up in uh, M MLA and format for the class. And I'm also going to show you a little bit about APA, even though we're not doing that for your assignments in this class. Uh, this screencast is I'm not talking about, or I'm not going to show you the formatting for your work cited yet. All that I'm really showing you is how all, every document should be set up. Um, so in the in the lecture video that lecture number one that you watched, I talked about the reasons behind MLA and why we have it um, standardized and how, why there are rules for setting everything up. Uh, so this is just showing you in a, a Word document how you set everything up. Um, I prefer that you use a Microsoft Office uh, document like Word. Um, I think you can do most of these features in Google Docs, but Google Docs gets a little tricky whenever you try to do your work cited because of the spacing that is required. But we can cross that bridge when we get there. So um, every assignment that you turn in for this class, uh, the reading responses, the activities, whatever it is, and any assignment you turn in for any class, it should be set up in this exact way that I'm about to show you. Uh, so uh, it's, it keeps everybody's the same. Um, so this is, uh, I'm going to show you an MLA document. So I'm going to go to the home. And so this is what should be at the top. So first off though, it should be in, uh, if you look at this little uh, <laughs> font box here, all MLA paper should be in Times New Roman regular not bold or underlined or anything like that 12 point font and uh so that should be your font in word you can set that to be the setting every time for the spacing it should be double spaced and then it, the default for word is that um between each paragraph it usually puts like a a line of space it'll have a number right here maybe like a six or a ten maybe um, and you'll need to go in and manually take down the spacing after each paragraph to zero. Because um, what that does, if you see the, um, I don't know if it'll show you in the preview, it's not showing. Uh, but what it'll do is if you have a number there, it'll put a line of space in between each paragraph. And in MLA, we don't want that. We want there to be a regu like just regularly spaced um, lines between every paragraph. So you'll need to probably take that down. I think it's set up to be automatically there. Um, when, if you're in your own program in Word, you can, once you get these things set, you can set as default and every document will have that. Um, so yeah, Times New Roman 12 point font, double spaced. At the top of the paper, it should be um, this your, your name, the student's name, um, enter one line, teacher's name into one line class name right like the name of the course and then the due date a lot of people mess up the due date they put whatever date it is they're creating the document or they'll put like you know just that day's date uh, but that's not the date that goes there the, the date that goes there at the top of the page on the left is the due date so whatever date you're creating the document is irrelevant. It, it's the due date that goes there. Then you enter one more time and you go up here and you center. You can go up to the menu and hit the center button. And then that is the title of the paper. So notice that I didn't underline it. It's not bold. It's not a bigger font. I didn't put a whole bunch of extra space between here. It's the next line down. The title of the paper is in title case meaning that all of the major words are capitalized. <clears throat> so I capitalized title and paper, but of and the were not capitalized. Um, so that that's called title case, and that's how the titles of your paper will appear. After that, you enter down one more line and go back up to your menu and move it back over to the left hand margin. You don't put a whole bunch more lines of space under that. <laughs> it's just the very next line down. You hit tab just like you will at the beginning of every paragraph, and this is where you start your paper. And it continues from there, right? And then every paragraph is indented, <laughs> and just like a regular paper. 
But this is sort of how you set up this front. I know it's really boring and not super attractive, but it is the standardized way that every MLA paper should look. Uh, there's one more element, and that is you need to add your page number in the header. So I'm going to show you how to do that in Word. In Google Docs, that might be a little bit different, but um, I'm not 100% sure, but this is how you do it in Word. Um, so you go up to Insert. You can go to the header and footer. You can either insert um, a header, but it, since you're going to do a page number anyway, it's easier to insert a page number. And the page number for MLA goes in the top right. So let me, it needs to give me the, yeah, the top right corner. So when you insert the page number, it will give you a cursor. You can kind of see there's a cursor blinking there. So your last name, you type in your last name. And then be sure to hit space afterwards so that there's a space in between. So the thing about you have to do it this way. You have to do insert page number <clears throat> because that way, if you just typed a one there, there'd be a one on every page. So you have to actually hit insert page number so that when you type it automatically, um, at makes it a two on the next page and a three on the next page, et cetera, et cetera. So if you just type in the number one, you'll have a number one on every page. I see a lot of student papers that are like that. So you, that's how you do it. You insert the page number and it will automatically generate the numbers for you. So if you double, double click here in the paper, it'll take you back in where you can edit your paper. Um, so this is what the top of the, you know, the heading of every MLA essay should look like anytime you're required to have MLA in your class. It, all of your assignments for this class, for sure. When you go to your literature class next time, your um, the top of your paper should be set up just like this. Um, not a bunch of extra space around the title up and above. Not triple space up here. Not a whole bunch of extra information. Not a date besides the due date. And you need to make sure that up here your um, last name is included along with the page number. I have included on Canvas a template document that has this set up just like this. So if you want to go into Canvas in the files and save that template, MLA document template onto your computer, <coughs> excuse me, you can you can use that and just fill in all the information for yourself each time and then so that way the the formatting is already set up for you um, if you'd like. <clears throat> if you have any questions about this MLA formatting um, at any point obviously let me know if you're not sure how to make it do what it needs to do let me know and I can try to help you. Okay so as I mentioned some of you at some point might need to do uh, a paper in APA. And APA is a little bit trickier because APA just in um, about a year ago, in October of 2019, so at the time that this video is being recorded, it's not even, it's less than a year ago, that APA uh, changed their formatting requirements. They overhauled their whole system and changed the the title page. And so you, if you have a class that's requiring APA, you need to verify with the instructor which version of APA. Uh, most instructors have been used to APA the sixth edition for several years. Well now APA uses the seventh edition as of October 2019 and the requirements are different. So you need to verify with your professor which one they need and I'll show you what's the main difference. So I'm going to get rid of all of this and I'm going to get rid of all of this and we're going to start fresh. Okay, so for an APA cover page the APA, for, first of all, has a cover page where, <coughs> excuse me, where MLA does not have a cover page. They just, you have the information at the top of the first page where your text starts, as I showed you. APA, you have a cover page. So um, the information on APA cover page is centered and it starts kind of, you know, halfway down the page, just depending on how much you have 
Um, so I'm going to scroll. Uh, let's see, I'll go back up a little bit. So you have the title, and I'm going to go up here and make it bold because the title is in bold and centered. And it's in title case, just like I mentioned a while ago with the uh, MLA paper. And then I'm going to remove the bold. Then you enter down and you add a line in between. And then you have the student's name. And then you have the department and the the department that the class is, is taking place in and the school. Right. Then I'm going to move down a little bit. Then you have the let's see name of the class. Oops. And you have to spell it right. <laughs> and then you have I think you have the um due date yes is after that so that is what you put on the title page that might be a little bit too far down you just have to kind of see how far how much space it takes up some people's title is really long it takes up more than one line um, yeah so that's essentially what you put on the cover page in that order and that spacing their their requirements for font and everything are the same times new roman 12 point font double spaced but they do have the title in bold. They have a little bit extra space here, and they have this information on the cover page. Uh, one more element of the cover page is they also have the um, the uh, header, right? They, you have the page number. So this is what the page number, um, all they have is very similar to MLA. You just put the page number in the top uh, right corner of the page. And so for a uh, paper, that's all you do. So for a APA, for their most recent edition, they have decided that there are different requirements for a student paper than there are for a, like a professionally, like a published paper, a, sc a scholarly paper that's being published. And so for a student paper, <clears throat> these are the requirements. This is all there is. You have the page number at the top. You have the this information on the cover page um, and that's it however some of your professors might be still wanting you to do the old way the uh, APA 6th edition way if that's the case the he the header is a little bit different the the stuff on the title page is basically the same um, I think the old APA didn't have it in bold. It just had it in regular type and there wasn't space. So they've added that sort of um, formatting element where they made the title in bold. That's new. Um, and But then the main thing is the header has changed. So um, I'm going to delete this page number. And so the way you have to do the old header is um, you have to make it have a different first page because the first page... Um, header is a, has a little bit of a different formatting than the um, the rest of the pages. Okay, so on the first page, you insert the page number, and to get the cursor to do right, you have to insert it over on the left, because then you have to type in all caps. Actually, not in all caps. Yet. You type the words "running head." which means this is going to be the header that's running through the whole document. It's called a running head that's on every page. Running head colon, and then the, the running head itself is in all caps, and it is um, usually a shortened version of the full title. Um, so say your title is this long thing that takes up a, a whole big long line or a couple of lines down here, the running head is just sort of a shortened version of it um, at the top in all caps. And then you have to hit the tab button to move the page number over to where it really needs to go. If you insert the page number over here, 
and it gives you the cursor, you can't move that text over here where it needs to be. You have to insert the page number over here to get the cursor, type in what you need, and then, you know, insert and then move the page number over. So that is what the um, header of an APA paper used to look like uh, just, just this, you know, less than a year ago. So if your professor wants you to, that's what you'll need to do. So you remember we made it different on the first, you know, from the first page to second page. So I'm going to insert a page break to get us down to a new page. And so this is what um, your header on the second page needs to look like. You need to do the same thing. Insert the page number. And it should, yes, it automatically it numbers it, starts numbering it with two. You can go into the page number um, formatting and change the numbering of page numbers if you need to, but you shouldn't need to do that at any point um, yeah, for basic papers you're doing. So instead of having the text running head, you just have the head, it's the header itself. That's why the first page is different. Um, so on the first page, you're basically announcing this is going to be the header running through the paper with the title running head. Then the rest of the paper actually has that header. Um, you see the difference? Uh, so that's, they've gotten rid of that <coughs> whole thing with student papers. That's still the case in APA, the new APA in the professional papers. It still has the running head. But they have taken away the text on the first page that says running head. You just have the running head throughout the whole paper. So again, you'll need to verify with your instructor which version of APA they're, they're wanting. Um, one more thing for an APA paper, uh, depending on if your professor wants you to, uh, the very first page after the title page is um, the abstract. And so the, the title of that <clears throat> is bold and says abstract uh, there and then you go I'm going to take the bold away you go down to the very next line and go to the left and uh, the abstract paragraph is not indented so it starts at the left and it's just a straight paragraph if your professor is not requiring a an abstract then you just skip this page Okay. Um, if if there is no abstract, which on student papers a lot of times there is not is not an abstract. The further you get in your in your major, your if especially if it's a science class or something, your your professor probably will require an abstract. Which the abstract is a short, usually maybe from here to here, just a few, a few lines, maybe half a page at the most, of a, a summary of what the paper is about. If you look on, if you look up research, if you look up articles online, you'll see an abstract. You'll see what the, what it is. It's a short description of what the paper is about. If your professor does not require an abstract, your very next page after the title page um, will start the paper. Um, in old MLA, you just started right in. Uh, sorry, old APA papers, you just started right in with your paper at the first line. Now they are having you put the title of the paper again at the top in in bold and then the uh, the first line is indented the paper starts here indented just like you do with MLA um, you indent the first paragraph and start your paper um, some APA papers have subheadings we don't really do subheadings in MLA as much but if you have subheadings um, in a paper, um, they are usually, um, the first subheading is centered in bold, just like the title. Um, and then the subheadings after that are over to the left in bold. Again, if you have an APA paper that's require, requiring subheadings, you'll need to verify with your professor how they want those formatted. Um, but this is the basic setup for an APA paper. Um, once again, I do have a document template in Canvas set up to have this formatting already in place with APA format. It is in the old version of APA, so I can go in there and change it to the new version of APA. I should probably do that um, so that if you need it, it will be in the in the the most recent version.
Um, there's one more resource I want to give you, and I'll just kind of type it down here. But there's a website that I like to use a lot, and for any sort of um, MLA or APA formatting questions, it's kept up to date. Um, anything with the references and citations, and that is a uh, Purdue University's uh, online writing lab. You might have had a, a teacher in the past who's who's referenced this or used it before. Um, but the way you get there is www. It's OWL. It's called the OWL, the online online writing lab. Um, Purdue.edu. Pretty sure that's the um, the URL. Yeah. So let's see if it'll let me click on that. Did it do it? I can't tell if it did it. <laughs> There we go. Oh. Oh, whoops. Well, I have. Let's see. Oh, there's my old page. Let me pull up. I have some old videos here. Okay, so I have um, the online writing lab pulled up on the on the web. So if you go to al.purdue.edu, this is what it looks like. And over here on the left are, I've already gone to the um, APA. So let me, I can go back and show you what it looks like. Yeah, so when you go to al.purdue.edu, this is what it looks like. Um, you have the campus writing lab, but then you have the online writing lab. So if you go to the online writing lab, you can go over here to the left and go to research and citation and you can go down to see they have a, the APA updated um, for the new the most recent one and you can go to the formatting and you can go to general format um, you can look oh I don't want that you can go to you know the you know reference references for articles and books things like that um, if you go to the general format, um, you can, it'll tell you how to, you know, the font and everything like that, all the, the title page and everything, and it'll describe it for you. Um, but there's one thing that I wanted to show you. Oh, here's the title page. You can go to a sample APA paper. Right, and they do have the same thing for MLA, but I'm giving you a little less guidance with APA because we're not using it. So if you need guidance with APA, this is how you can find it. And so they have the student paper here on top, and then they have the professional paper underneath. Um, so you can scroll through the student paper, and it explains all of the items, you know, the, all of the elements, and you can kind of see what's required. And it takes you all the way through. So you can see how the subheadings are set up uh, and all the different levels. I'm trying to scroll down. And then you can get to, that's a long student paper. You can get to the references and see how those are set up. So this is a, that's a great resource, the sample APA paper on the online writing lab. The, uh, for MLA, they have, it's updated also with like the most recent uh, versions and you can go to the style guide and go to the the general format and you can see we'll use this again when we get to our annotated bibliographies and the papers you're writing um, but it has the same information for MLA and has just sort of the general guidelines for how to set everything up um, and so you can see here how I you know I set it up at the top just like I showed you um, you can see the sample um, see how there's you know it's all evenly all all evenly spaced everything that I showed you um, I'm gonna say I don't know if they have the a full sample paper because it's not quite as complicated but you can see this the setup there that I just showed you but the, yeah this is a great resource the online writing lab at Purdue um, so that's really the last thing I wanted to uh, show you in this class 
and uh, for this for this screencast for the things you need for this class. Um, I hope that was you know not too confusing and pretty clear. But if you're you know if you don't remember how to do that, definitely ask me. You can use the templates that I've provided on Canvas to set up your document. Um, but yeah, so now that you have this video and you have the screencast, I expect everything, all of your papers to be set up like this going forward. Anything you submit needs to be set up in that format. Um, your reading responses, assignments, everything, um, so that it just gets you in that habit, gets you in the practice of uh, setting everything up the way it needs to be set up and getting the habit of making it standardized, making all of your assignments standardized like that. Um, okay, so that's that's it for this video. If you have any other questions, uh, feel free to reach out and get in touch. Um, if you're not sure how to do anything, uh, you can go back and rewatch the video or you can ask me for help. I don't mind for that at all. Um, but until next time, I hope you guys have a good day and I will talk to you later.